Big clean up this morning, got the manifold, the boil kettle, and in here we also got the mash tun cleaned, everything sort of swept down, most of the crap removed. Got some sodium hypochlorite to the unit, from the unit to clean everything down with. We got water in the HLT. I'm just about to start recirculating that now to get us up to temp. We're only at 47 degrees at the moment and we've also got a grain bill outside. Here's the grain bill with the recipe. All right folks, today is shaping up to be one of the hottest of the year, possibly even the hottest bank holiday on record and we're gearing up to brew a beer. Right, we've got fans on, HLT on, we're about to dump in the grain, which is quite a simple grain bill. But first, of course, we need the manifold. That would have been a schoolboy error, so this has had a real good scrub this morning. Everything is clean and shiny. So now we're going to put the grain in. Really simple, this one. 4.5 kilos of propino or pale malt or two row, whatever you guys want to call it, and 200 grams of uh, caralite. It's about crystal 10 to crystal 15, thereabouts. Okay, while we're waiting for this dry water to heat up, let's take a quick look at the recipe. So it's a keep it simple, stupid pale ale, and the idea behind this one is we're going to go for a relatively low ABV, a relatively low IBU, just so we can pick up on any off flavours or anything in the process. Make sure we're tuned in, dialed in, everything's looking good. Uh, if you want to see this, there's a link down below in the description. So just click that and it'll take you to a PDF that you can print off of this exact recipe. We're shooting for a 66 degree mash temperature. We've got everything in. We're sort of 0.5 of a degree high, which is great because I'm not going to be recirculating this through the Herms coil today. So that 0.5 buffer, when we've had an hour mash, should be about perfect. So we just have to put the lid on, set the timer, crack open a beer and chill. Being the sucker for punishment I am, I thought why not do a barbecue while we're making beer. Hey Jem. Oh, she's she's full of the joys of summer, aren't you, love? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well here it is. What I will be mainly cooking up to go on my burger. As we come in, we shall see that we've decided to open the AM PM while the mash is ongoing and it looks like we've dropped a degree, 1.3 degrees on the mash there and there's just uh, two or three minutes left before I start to recirculate. So we've got the strike water, or the fly sparge water, recirculating independently there. And I've rigged up to come out the bottom of the mash tun through the uh, Kingdom pump 3000 I recommend you go to Kick Kingdom and purchase this pump now. It's a good pump. Matt will help you out. He's a dude. And then we're going to whip that across here into the boil kettle, which is ready and waiting for a beautiful, beautiful sweet wort. Or wort, depending on how you want to say it. We also have the hops weighed out in convenient plastic cups and I know what you're thinking single-use plastic no no 
I've had these for over a year. I just wash them out. So we've got the first drop of 25 grams of atanum, the second drop which will be going in at 10 minutes of 50 grams of atanum, and then the third and final drop of 25 grams of atanum going in at 5. That's a 60 minute addition by the way, the first one. Which will give us I think around 20 plus IBUs, I can't recall. Yeah, maybe 25, something like that. It's on the recipe. Check out the link. There she goes. So, simple job now. Just got to run a little bit of work out of this pipe. Come down and have a look. So we just want to get the, uh, get the work flowing. There we go. Just get rid of any airlocks and any cleaning fluid that was left in the pipe. A little spar jam that I might just put into practice. Let's give this a whirl. I wasn't going to pull this out today, but to save disturbing the grain bed and all. working really quite well. So I'll just stick the timer back on for another 15 minutes. I'm going to slow that down a touch actually. But now that recirculates, now does the vol off. It will help clear the work before we transfer it into the vol kettle. But you already know this, don't you? That's for the guys who don't. So we'll come back in 15 and you'll see the transfer. Right, we're in. We're about ready now to swap over and run all of this sweet work into the boil kettle. What I will show you is how clear this work has come out. So, we'll just zoom you right in onto the business end of this bad boy. It's clear as a bell, that one, guys. Look at that. So, we're transferring across to the boil kettle. We've got the filter in the bottom, we're just going to clamp her onto the side here. We'll turn off the recirc for the HLT. And then we'll connect this pipe. I'm just going to have to flip this because it's not long enough. We'll connect this pipe to there. And then at the same time as sparging, we can also rinse out our spar jar. So we'll just open that up and you'll see that in action. And the other chicken's going at it. And then the next trick is we really have to dial in the speed for the uh, runoff. So what you don't want to be doing is filling this up fast. It's trickled and it's a balancing act between the two now. So we'll come back when we've transferred all of that lovely, lovely sweet work into the boil kettle. We're moving along nicely. We're up to about 20 litres in there and we've got just about the right amount of water over the grain bed. Could probably just do with an extra 5 or 10 mil. But she's going well. It's a bit of a constant battle trying to get the uh, hot, past the hot break, particularly when um, it's a warm day like today. Uh, fortunately, I've got two controls on the wall here for one element, and the second, so we've got two elements in there which I can control independently. And then we've got one of these N2006P PIDs, 
these are way better than the Rex C100s because if you press and hold the set button it goes into manual mode and the good thing about manual mode is you can set uh, what percentage time you want the element to be on for. So at the minute we're on 86, you see the output blink in there and you'll see as well the power light for the switch blinking on and off. So it's on 86% of the time, off for 24. And that just seems to be controlling the hot brake nicely and if it gets a little bit too excited we simply just knock a percentage point off until we find that equilibrium and then we'll gradually start bringing it back up again so it's constantly rolling but not boiling over. Tricky but you know never turn your back on it would be my advice. I think you can just see in there now we've achieved somewhat of a steady state I'm going to drop in our 25 gram edition of a tannum. This might aggravate the film somewhat, but generally it should be well behaved considering that we've got the PID on manual and we're actually sitting down at 70% now with both elements on. And of course we're recirculating. to hit the time where we whack in the immersion chiller so let's get that bad boy in now I managed to do the brew day today without putting the um, chimney on top of the boil kettle which is a very uh, well doesn't often happen often to be honest right that's in there now basically to sanitize the devil and uh, in a couple of moments we will be dropping in the next hop edition very close now to finishing the boil we've just got oh, the five minute edition to go in and uh, we will be complete and ready to chill her down which is good because I'm uh, getting quite hot now outside. The temperature is well above 26 degrees C. I need to sit down. Oh. Last drop, folks. There's the five minutes. Give it five minutes and we're going to start chilling this bad boy down. And we're going to get it into the fermentor. And drop some USO5 on there. And then we'll talk about the recipe when we're complete. Right, we're down to temp. I've got myself a nice clean fermenter here and uh, well you know the drill boys right there she is folks we managed to collect 21 litres I'll just sprinkle the yeast over this sexy own there we go, yeasty poo. And we'll get that in to the fermentation chamber. Right, we're a couple of hours later now. The uh Everything's been cleaned up, pretty much. I've had something to eat. And the beer, more importantly, has stabilized. It's sitting currently at 19.8 degrees in the fermentation fridge. So hopefully, we're gonna have a seamless fermentation and I'm gonna track it religiously to the profile that I've set on the recipe. Now, as I said, the reason for doing this was to just make sure I was ironing out any creases in uh, in the brew because the last time I did a batch of beer in here there was definitely something not right with it and I believe it was oxidized and that could have been due to the fact that the fermenta the fermentation vessel didn't actually fit into the firm chamber the temperatures could have been out of whack 
could have been anything, we don't know. Uh, so this is what this test is going to be about, so I will update you as we're going along over the past week, uh, next week or two. If you would like to brew this beer, it's a very, very simple grain bill, very, very simple mash profile, and relatively simple fermentation profile. I'm going to save this down as a PDF, and I'm going to pop it onto a link, and I'll leave it in the description. You guys can go there, download it, print it off, have a look. It's not a comprehensive recipe, there might be a bit missing, and don't you don't have to follow it to the letter. You can play about with it if you like. But it's there for you anyway. So just click the link down there and you'll be able to see what we made today. But other than that, bank holiday's over, we'll be back at work tomorrow, and I'll see you for an edition of the vlog on Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs> Is that the cake that they left over day? Oh no! Oh, it tastes nice! <laughs> you have a go! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Give it to the chickens! <laughs> <laughs>